Absolutely, yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Bob Chapius, Director of Operations at uh, Uber Freight. I'm filling in for Bill Driggert, who has an MIT degree, but I'm told I'm an upgrade because we don't care about MIT degrees around here. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. There was a, uh, there was an idea. Is this, what's that or how do we? It's, it's one, it's one ahead. ahead, big slide. That's one slide ahead. Okay, there we go, James Bond. So we're gonna talk about James Bond. Now the idea of Uber started um, with this guy named Garrett Camp who was in San Francisco and he thought that it would be really cool if he could, um, if he could push a button and have a driver show up and pick him up. And I always thought this was a cool story. Um, his friends could have limos around him and all this stuff. And the, what the magic really was just that you could see the car as it would come pick you up and deliver you to your final destination, which was like probably a restaurant or something like that in San Francisco. And so while I was at Coyote, started thinking to myself, it would be really cool if we could have some sort of uh, interaction with our carriers other than the phone. I was a carrier up at the time. So spent a lot of time calling truck drivers, asking them if they wanted to book loads and was like, there should be like Uber, but for freight, that would be cool. So we wanted to be cool like James Bond. We started Uber for freight. I was in a warehouse. We, we thought we were, we were trying to figure out who we are, but ultimately we became a broker we had an app that would connect drivers to carriers, provide a real-time price. Driver could book the load. And slowly we gained traction. The market seemed to um, gravitate to the model. We grew, grew, grew. And we started to hear feedback that ship, from the shipper community that they wanted more from us. And really what they wanted was something beyond just an automated booking James Bond experience. They wanted actually us to extend our offering into um, further upstream areas within their supply chain, further downstream final mile areas within their supply chain. Um, so we asked ourselves, how can we actually unlock more value for our shippers? How can we kind of provide more with less? Um, and at the time, the market was in a, in a crazy state, but drivers are aging out. So less carriers for us broker people to call. So there's 17,000 truckload brokers in the US, I believe. And we were calling an aging population of drivers who no longer wanted to drive. And so we were trying to figure out how do we actually aggregate the long tail, make them available to shippers um, and the shipper community who are using this like incredibly fragmented software stack to manage their business. Um, and so we started thinking, how do we actually use data to unlock more value for our shippers? The, the, the light bulb went off at some point more recently, and we acquired Transplace, who offers a 4PL service, so a fully managed transportation service. Uh, we started thinking, how do we get into the planning layer? How do we get into final mile? How do we be, become something more than just a 3PL logistics provider for our shippers? Um, and and when, while doing that, we started noticing, okay, if we, if we have data upstream and we have data downstream, there's a ton of value that we can create that we never even anticipated that we could create. So I'm just gonna provide a few examples of some of the things that we do in the visibility space that we believe add value for shippers. So we think about visibility. I think we were talking about real-time rate. We have real-time rating. We're focusing a little bit more on tracking and what that tracking data can be used for in, in the context of a control tower. Um, and then what we do with facility insights. So. I think tracking is a good place to start because um, we've heard a lot about what tracking data we can do or how we can use tracking data. Um, the more and more GPS data that we can ingest, the more and more useful that data can be. No one wants to sit there and just look at the truckload for two days and watch it. They actually want to be able to predict what um, might happen so that they can create impact for their organization. So um, today, our primary source of tracking data is our Uber Freight app. So the app that I showed before Drivers are on that. We can we can call for GPS locations and we can give the shipper a breadcrumb trail of where their driver is. But like I said, that's just that's just the starting point. We also ingest P44 data, aggregator data, data from wherever we can get it effectively to enhance the service that we can provide to our shippers. Then, like I said, it's kind of about what do we actually do with that data that um, creates impact for organizations. So we've built a control tower and we have a pretty sizable team of data scientists that try to predict using GPS data, using any data that's available, which of these loads or which of these shipments is kind of veering off track. 
and then we provide that information to the shipper so that they can address it. Maybe, maybe two days before a load is supposed to deliver, we notice that the driver has stopped in some oddball location and we give that visibility to the shipper who can maybe change the dock door at their warehouse or something like that to um, save time. Um, and then the, la ooh, the last and probably the area that I'm the most excited about is what we're starting to do with facility data. So as more facilities are coming online and more um, truckers are starting to use our app or um, some other version of a TMS that we are able to ingest data from, we're able to understand exactly how was the experience at the facility. We're able to understand the things like dwell time. We're able to understand things like um, the check-in process. How does How is that going? And we noticed that poor facility ratings correlates directly to higher price for shippers. So as, as um, we were talking about earlier, our real-time price will actually be higher for a shipper that has a lower facility grade. So it translates directly to cost here. And then the other and maybe more important um, correlation that we, we think a lot about is how do we actually use the drivers in the population more effectively? So if we can eliminate dwell time at facilities, we can actually make a dent into the driver shortage. And it all kind of comes together into this make-believe logistics cloud slide where carriers and shippers can interact um, on the logistics platform that comes together, 3PL, 4PL, um, and we're able to do some really cool things. I think somebody mentioned the art of the possible. The last slide that I'll leave everyone with is kind of the, our version of the art of the possible. It's just something that happened, I think, last week, but increasingly more and more, and this is what we're driving to, which is a touchless load. So a touchless load now to us would mean more than just a driver booking the load, the James Bond experience. It would mean the shipment being originated to us automatically via API. We accept automatically. We have a driver book automatically. We set, we set appointments. We set delivery appointments automatically. And then we pay the carrier automatically. So this happens. It's, it's a real thing. It does happen. It's not the majority of the time, but it's kind of our North Star. So. That's what I'll leave you with, and thank you.